advanced functions 1.1. So this is um, the first real lesson in the textbook. The previous lesson that I did for you was like a getting started or, you know, before you start. Um, chapter one is a pretty easy chapter. I think you'll find it's mostly review. Um, but hang on to your hats because it does get much more difficult, especially when we get into chapter six in trigonometry. So 1.1 talks about some mathematical models and a lot about domain and range and whether something is or is not a function. So it should be familiar to you in some ways. And the first thing they ask is, can you set up a little mathematical model here? You want to build a rink that has an area of 1800 square meters. The length needs to be 30 meters longer than the width. What should the dimensions be? So you're given area. And you know the formula for area is length times width. So that would probably be the first thing you should write down so that you know what you're trying to put in here. You, you can't have two variables here, right? We want to get it all in terms of one. So they tell you that the area is 1800 and that the length has to be 30 meters longer than the width. So let's call this the width here. And this is going to be the width plus 30. And now you can see you can make a nice little equation here. We're going to have 1800 for the area is going to be the length, which we now call W plus 30 times W. And all you have to do now is expand, simplify, and solve for W. So let's do that. We have W squared. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. 30 W's. Then I'm going to subtract 1800 so I can get it all on one side. Set that equal to zero. Now, if you get to this point and you're going, oh, multiplies to negative 1800 and adds to 30, uh, some of you might have a little bit of problem figuring that out. But if you uh, think just a little bit, you know that 18, forget about the zeros for a minute, 3 and 18, that's like 6 and 3, right? So yeah, sure, it works. And it happens to be um, 60 and minus 30. So 60 times minus 30 is negative 1800. And 60 plus a minus 30 is 30. So those are my two magic numbers. So this becomes W. We have plus 60 and W minus 30 equals zero. So that would say, oh, the width is going to be negative 60, which you should say right away, I can't have a negative length. So it's inadmissible. And we say then the width will be 30. So if the width is 30, then you should have a concluding statement. I kind of ran out of room here. Therefore, the width should be 30 meters and the length which is going to be 30 plus 30 60 meters okay so um just an easy start to kind of get you thinking about some word problems you know they have a lot of these representation kind of models to talk about functions and you have to say is this a function or not so I call them egg diagrams. I don't know what the actual terminology is, just some kind of a representation of a model, an input and output. So this is like X's and Y's, and that's what I would write over here. Um, and again, your textbook likes to use input, output, just to confuse you. Okay, so X and Y, so this would be like a, a set, right? I could write it out like this. It's a set of one, zero, whoops put the bracket in the wrong spot. I'm getting messy. One, zero, two, one. So you could list all the ordered pairs. Two and one, three and one, three and two. So three, one, three, two. And the last one is four, three. So this is the set of these numbers, right? It's the same thing. I could write it this way. I could write it this way. Now, is it a function? Well, you know that the true definition of a function says that for every value of x, there's one and only one value for y. So if I look here, I can see that this 3 has two values. 
and also you can see it right off here as well right you don't have to write this out to do that this is just showing you how it could also be represented so if you were to graph this you'd have one two three and one that would be one coordinate and three and two and you would have two points above each other and that would be inadmissible for a function using the vertical line test remember that one vertical line test vertical line test said if you draw a vertical line on your graph of a function anywhere and you cross it more than one point then it is not a function not a function now you could also be asked what is the domain and range of this what is the domain of this and what is the range and and really it's just right here the domain is one two three four and the range is zero one two three so you would list them right so something like this domain equals and then you just put one two three four you don't even have to say anything else about them those are the only values in the domain this isn't one of those nice smooth functions that you draw without lifting your pencil it's just a series of points so the range is zero one two three simple okay a slightly more difficult question y equals 1 over x minus 2 squared is this a function now in advanced functions you're going to learn a lot about graphing functions and I'll give you a little clue to a lesson further down the road and that says that you know where the restriction is here for this function right the restriction is x cannot be equal to 2 because if x was equal to 2 then you would be having a zero in the denominator which of course is inadmissible so the function actually is going to look like this so one two where i have two i draw an asymptote now something that's not in the textbook but i really encourage you to learn from one of my lessons later on is that if this is squared this means that the function is going in the same direction on both sides of this asymptote so because it's going to be positive always right i know it's positive because i'm squaring it anytime you square a negative you get a positive so that means the function is going to go up like this on both sides if it's even they go up or down in the same direction if it's odd then they go in opposite directions that's going to be really handy when we get into um, some other curve sketching now the other asymptote you should be aware of here is the one that is on the horizontal axis of y equals zero. Why is that true? Because I never approach zero here. It's like your graph one over x, right? When you had one over x, no matter what you put in here, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So I could plug in some values if I put in, uh, say, three. So I'd have one. Right? So when I have 3, I would have 1. And if I put in 1 here, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is also 1. So it's going through like this. And as I use larger and larger numbers, the function is going to, the um, y values are going to get smaller and smaller because you're dividing by a bigger number, right? If I divide 1 by 100, I'd have 0 0.01. I divide 1 by 1,000, 0 0.001. So these approach the axis. They never cross. So we have y equals 0 for this horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. And this is my vertical. Okay, so is it a function? Absolutely, it's a function. There's, if I did the vertical line test, just because it doesn't exist at x equals 2, it doesn't mean it is not a function. So your answer is yes, it is. It is a function. Okay, so moving on to a little word problem here. We have another word problem about a Ferris wheel. Now you probably remember uh, Ferris wheel questions. You found those in your trigonometry, right? When we did trigonometry in grade 11. So it says a Ferris wheel has a radius of 7 meters. The axle is 8 meters above the ground and it rotates once every 40 seconds. A ride consists of 12 rotations. What are the domain and range of this function? So the domain and range, domain means 
what x values, or in this case it's going to be time, right, it's in seconds, and height. So that the function would be something like height at time t equals blah blah blah, and it's going to be a trigonometric function. But they're not asking for the trigonometric function, they just want to know what is the domain, the domain and range. So the domain for this little story, and that's why they get into this little talk about domains, because domain can change depending on whether or not you have a word problem. Because as you know, if I said, what's the domain of uh, sine theta? You say, well, it goes on and on forever and ever. I mean, I can draw sine theta, blue, 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 forever and ever and ever, right? So this one has a restriction on it because it is a ride that has um, uh, 12 12 rotations every 40 seconds. So if they do 12 rotations, it's going to be 12 times 40, so 480 seconds. That's my domain. Because it's going to, um, if you start it off, you're actually going from zero, the ride starts at time zero, and it goes up to time 480 and t is going to be an element of real numbers because there are fractions of seconds you don't stop time okay so between 0 and 480 now the range the range is the height right how high does this thing go well it said you got on the axle is 8 meters above the ground that's this point here right so if I kind of drew a little graph here this would be 8 meters and it um, the radius is only seven meters so this is seven meters here that means there's one meter underneath right it's one meter to get on before you get on the, the chairs aren't sitting on the ground you have to get up onto it maybe you have to be lifted onto it okay so the domain the range here is going from here which is one meter and then I'm going to add seven more meters up here to get to the height, the top height of my Ferris wheel. And that would be eight plus seven or 15 meters. So this is my, my range is all this part here, right? From here to here, that's my range. So the range is going to be um, between one and the height, we'll call it height at time t, and it goes up to 15 and it is also an element of real numbers. Kind of squishy, but it's good. Okay, and finally, I'm just gonna do a couple of similar questions from your homework. They do a lot about state, the domain, the range, whether it is a function. So this function here, well, is it a function? One over X minus two. Now you know how to graph one over X. You did that last year. One over X goes like this and like this. Right? There's one over x. I had to think for a minute. Summer's been too long. Now x minus two, do you remember what that means? Because this is a horizontal shift. Which way? Right two, right? Because it says what makes the denominator zero? So x cannot be equal to two. So x not equal to means I've moved it over here. So x equals 2 is my asymptote, vertical asymptote. Here it was 0, right? x equals 0, y equals 0. So we have this one here, and we have the other one over here. So is that a function? Yes. What is the domain? x is an element of real numbers. x is not equal to 2. That's this one here, okay? And the range, well, it goes everywhere, doesn't it? Except where? It doesn't go to zero. So y is an element of real numbers. I'm running out of pen, ink. y is not equal to zero. So I think I was going off the page there. Okay, is this relation a function? One, zero, two, zero, four, one. Do you see any repetitions here of the x having two values for y? No, right? So if I wrote them out, you'd have this, one zero, two zero, four one.
So every value for x has one value for y. So the domain, you're just going to write 1, 2, 4. That's it. That's all you have to do. The range, 0, 1. And is it a function? Yes. It is a function. Now this one I've written out a set of coordinates. 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 6, 1, 7. And you should be able to spot right away that this 1, 2, and 1, 7, this means it's not going to be a function because this x has two values for y. Not a function. When x equals 1, y is equal to 2 and 7. Okay, so that's kind of it for 1.1. Not a lot of work there for you. Um, like I said, it was a pretty easy start to the course. So we'll keep moving on. Have a good day.